Greetings everybody, it's Rob from Sage Tower Games and we are back with another Marvel Champions video and this one is an updated tier list. So I've done a tier list be way before Galaxy's Most Wanted. This one is going to be more up to date and up, up to and including Mad Titan Shadow. Alright, so let's begin with this. Yeah, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the tier list and make a few changes to the tier list as we over already have it. The first change is with our friend Thor. Thor was in the F tier, one of the bottom tiers. I am moving Thor up into the C tier. He's gotten a few cards lately in some of the newer Galaxy Most Wanted sets. That more Asgardian cards, more aggression cards. Cards that really help Thor actually be a bit more stronger and a bit more Let's start with his play style. I feel like he has improved greatly. I'm also going to move Captain America up to the S tier. Now, last time I did this, the reason why I put Captain America A instead of an S tier was because he wasn't broken in the way that like the other characters on that tier can be. However, Captain America's just being how good Captain America is in general that is his brokenness in a sense. What I mean by this is he's really good. He has very little buildup and in the galaxy most wanted scenarios, possibly some of the Mad Titan Shadows scenarios, less buildup means you can get into the game a lot quicker, a lot faster and have more stuff you can deal with. We're getting a lot of more stronger leadership cards that are coming out. So those leadership cards are gonna help him he likes to play leadership anyway due to his ability. So it's going to be really powerful in my opinion. With that, let's hop into the list of ones that we have. And the first one is Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch, many people have said that Scarlet Witch is incredibly strong, very powerful. And she is powerful. I will give them that. However, for me, I'm going to actually put Scarlet Witch in my A tier. Not S. I'm not going to put an A. Only reason I don't put an S is her RNG with her abilities is a bit alright. It's a bit unpredictable. You do have Molecular Decay, which does damage. And you do have Hex Bolt, which unless you have the Crest, Hex Bolt can be very hit or miss with, with what you get. Also, it depends on what kind of encounter cards are in the deck. You may have very few of a particular type that you may want. Her Quicksilver Ally is okay, but frankly, I almost never play him. I just feel like he's not as useful as another card I could have. And otherwise, she's really good at thwarting and an okay hero, but I don't think she's unbelievably broken like some people say that she may be. I feel like she fits very nice on an A tier as a solid, strong choice. That takes us to the Galaxy Most Wanted cycle, which we haven't touched yet. Starting with the two heroes that came in the box to begin with, Rocket and Groot. So for Rocket, I'm actually putting Rocket at a B. The reason why I'm putting Rocket at a B, he's very good. He can do tons of damage. He has good utility with his weapons. And as the set, as the cycle came out, he got a lot more weapons. He got a lot more, you know, a lot more justice cards to play with him. He does require a lot of build up. He, his weapons built up. He's very squishy and nine health. Doesn't take a hit that well. You know, besides Schadenfreude as his healing mechanism, he has no really defensive cards in his set. Does have extra resources, but there's a lot of buildup for him to really get going. Even if you play him in the way that they want you to play him out of the box, with the follow through aggression cards and on his weapons, even side holster to get a third weapon out if you want, that's a lot of buildup. And it's going to take you some time to build up and hope that you a have the time to and b hope that you know you can get all those cards out and nothing's you know affects them you, you don't get caught off guard you don't get some sort of like playing against the collector or something it can be an issue so he's definitely good i feel like he's in a nice b roll b range where he has really good cards but plays really strongly but this takes a bit too much build up in my opinion Groot, on the other hand, gets put in the C department. And unfortunately, he gets put in the C department 
because Root kind of has a worse buildup issue than Rocket. And that is the growth counters. Groot needs the growth counters for his cards to really shine. And the problem is that those counters are also the ones that tick off whenever he takes damage. And there's a lot of mechanics in some scenarios where you just take damage and, you know, without you having to do it. A boost card flips over and it says deal one damage to every character you control. Or the villain phase begins, everybody takes two damage. This kind of stuff just tings and pings off your counters. And then you have to either defend or block. If you're blocking, you can't, unless you have all your vine upgrades set up, you can't use them. And those all require growth counters too. So he's very dependent on his growth counters to really make himself work. When he has it all built up, yeah, he's a beast. There's no stopping that. I mean, he can do 10 damage attacks, 10 thwarting abilities, give a bunch of people tough status cards if he needs to. He has a lot of utility in that sense. But it uses counters. And unfortunately, without fruition or fertile ground, there's not much to really accelerate him to get those counters. But he falls a bit slow, in my opinion. Next is Star-Lord, the captain of the Guardians. Now, I'll admit, Star-Lord made me go back and forth on where to put him on this list. And the place I decided to put him, it may be controversial, it may not be. I'm putting Star-Lord as an S-tier hero, with a caveat. I put a caveat in that Star-Lord is probably not the best hero for somebody to play and think that they're gonna win every time. What I mean by this is, you play Dr. Strange, you play Captain America, even Iron Man to, to a degree, like once he's built up, you're gonna probably win. It's a solid way to play. Star-Lord's play style is very high risk, high reward. The fact that you can pump out so much damage or do thwarting, do all sorts of stuff with Star-Lord is amazing, amazing. But the issue comes at the cost of encounter cards and depending on the scenario, depending on, you know, your play style, you may not have prepared to, to hit three, four, five encounter cards that that turn, and it could just destroy you instantly. And that's the problem. I think he's one of those like high skill ceiling type heroes where if you can play him and play his deck correctly, it'll be great. He's really powerful. There's no stopping him. But if you can't, you're going to fail pretty quickly. That's why I'm putting him as an S tier instead of an A tier because of his ceiling that he has of how much power he can actually generate and it's even more consistent than scarlet witch because it doesn't require specific boost icons it's just encounter cards on top of that star lord also gains a benefit from mad titan shadow with the cosmic entity cards i grant he can only play one of them but that card going into the encounter deck is a card that if he gets it, is one less bad card for him to get, but still boosts his abilities because it's an encounter card. So, overall, that is really good. Next up is Gamora. Now, I played a bit of Gamora, and for Gamora, I am putting Gamora at B tier. She's really good. I, I actually like her playstyle a lot. The events, there's a lot with the events, and I feel like there's a bit of a weird thing with how she plays where... She's really event-based and maybe not as much with her actual basic hero powers. And the reason I say this is, I found myself relying too much on cross-counter with her. I felt like if you have cross-counter in your hand, she's pretty much unstoppable. You know, three, da three damage block, one thwart, one damage, plus it triggers both her abilities. So it's essentially two damage, two thwart, three protection. It's a lot of stuff she can do. Without it, I felt myself be a bit panicked because I had to take a hit. And I think I only have 9 or 10 health as well. So I found myself having to flip down quite a bit to kind of get prepare myself and get ready for it. So she can do a lot. She can do a lot of stuff cheap and quick, which is really good. But that's not like... I feel like she doesn't have that powerhouse compared to some of the other ones. She does have really good events. I will say that. Really good events. But 
I just something about her playstyle just didn't felt like it was overpowered. I didn't feel super overpowered playing her. I felt like she was good. I didn't feel like she was overpowered. The next hero is Drax. And this, I'll tell you right now, as a preface to this, will probably be one of the heroes that will show up in the in the YouTube comments, most likely. Because I am putting Drax in my personal bias as an S tier. I know Drax probably isn't an S tier hero. He's probably not. He's probably an A, I would say. Or B, depending on, on what aspect you're probably playing for him. But Drax protection to me is just so amazing of a deck to build and play. I just, I can't deny its awesomeness. He has health. He has a great attack. His attack power can get to like four or five, I think five with the knife and all his vengeance counters. He does tons of damage with knife leap. He constantly can attack with his fight me coward. And he draws cards every time he attacks with his Dwight the Mastery. He can prevent damage with his some of his cards. He can do thwart with some of his actual signature cards. He has probably one of the best signature allies in the game with Mantis. Mantis's healing ability is amazing. Plus, he has his healing ability when he flips down to heal. Plus, he has the two stubborn to die card. So he just can pretty much prevent himself from dying with that card out in play. But he has health, he has ways to survive, he has damage, and he even has some thwarting potential without even considering any of the cards in his aspect. Mixing in, say, protection, and you use cards like deflection or even leading blow to do more damage, you know, unflappable, all the other cards to help him draw more cards. He's just really a powerhouse in protection, I feel like. Like, I used to feel like group protection was pretty good. Even Quicksilver protection is pretty good. Drax protection to me is just amazing. Aggression, he's also really good in it as well, but I feel like protection, for me, Drax, I'm just like, this is an awesome play style. This is what Hulk should have been. Hulk should have been this. I feel unstoppable as Drax. When, I, when you get built and you can just start pounding damage, it's like amazing how much damage you can do as Drax. Now I know, like I said, probably not deserving of an S for many people, but to me, Drax is that good. We'll follow up that controversial hero with another controversial hero, Venom. I am putting Venom as an A tier. Now I know, stop. Don't have to freak out. Don't go to, to the YouTube comments just yet. Many people put Venom as an S tier. Many people say Venom is amazing. I'm putting him as an A tier only because I just don't know. There's something about Venom that I just can't get with. He plays really good. Like you build him out with those pistols and the multi-gun, his ability, run and gun and all that. He can, he's amazing. He has card draw with spider sense. He has his ability to cancel attack to protect himself, a wild resource, for his ability. He has an amazing kit. Amazing kit. I can't go wrong with his kit. But there's just something about Venom that I just am like, doesn't excite me about it as much as say, like a Drax for instance. There's a, or a Star Wars even. Like there's a, something about that I'm just like, okay, he's really good. I just don't know. I don't know what it is about him. I don't. I hate to say it. Maybe if I play more of him, it might change. But otherwise, it's just not there for me. He's really solid though. He's definitely an amazing pack to get. Next, we're gonna go into the Mad Titan Shadow heroes. Now they've just recently come out. They're not even out in the US yet, technically. But we've seen the cards. I played a few games with them on Tabletop Simulator. So I'm gonna give these preliminary evaluations. Starting with Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock. I'm gonna put him as an A. I was well, looking at him initially, I was gonna put him at a B. I'm putting him at an A only because he's really good actually. Better than I thought he would play. I thought his playstyle would, would feel a bit weird. It actually doesn't feel that weird. He has, the only thing that, that, that 
in my opinion, that puts him from not being an S tier is Warlock requires a lot of build setup, in my opinion. You need both Mystic Senses out. You probably need either the Staff or the Cape as well. You should have Soul Ward out. I thought maybe you didn't have to play Soul Ward. Maybe you could play a deck based around something else. But it's so easy for Adam Warlock to blow through his deck that you should have Soul Ward out. And just the fact that you can flip down full heal whenever you want, essentially at that point, and you have your Alter Ego ability, which can cancel any stun or confuse on you, it means that when you flip down, you can pretty much refresh up to full and then just come back into the fight. Pip the Troll is also an amazing ally. Probably it's not as amazing as I would say Mantis, like for instance, but the ability of just being able to defend any attack from any player on the board with toughness is great. Now, he does a good amount, he does damage, he does do some thwarting, he, his battle mage ability is really powerful as well. He has some good stuff in that sense. Like I said, his, I think he requires a bit more setup than I would have liked to put him in the S tier. Lastly, we have Spectrum. Now, Spectrum, I am going to put this, this is again going to be a preliminary guess, and I'm going to put Spectrum as an S tier hero. And the reason why she's being an S tier hero is, honestly, her in leadership and the leadership cards that she comes with is amazing. Mass Attack is amazing. Mighty Avengers is amazing. The utility she has with her energy forms, where she can do 7 damage, she pretty much has a built-in Serene Web Kick into her, her deck, 3 copies. She pretty much has 3 copies of full Justice, basically with her Justice, uh, her Photon card. And she has a defense card that lets her defend for three, basically, and readies her so she, you don't even have to have her exhausted to do it. That gives her defense, thwarting, and damage potential, and that's just in her actual cards. Not kind of the fact that she has a, a three stat in any whenever you choose to go into one of those stats. Not to mention that they also have a, an ability that triggers when you flip into each form. Combine that with a damage potential from like a leadership. I even play her in other aspects. I play her in leadership right now. She's just amazing in that sense. This will probably change, I'll be honest. I wouldn't be surprised if she changes after with playthroughs with her. But otherwise, this is my list as of Matt Titan Shadow. And I hope you guys, you know, what you guys think about this list. I hope this, this is a good list. I will say, Looking at this list right now, I do want to possibly go and check out some of the older heroes. Maybe give them another examination, see if they might get removed. Not removed, but get readjusted depending on what cards we've gotten in the new cycles. It could change. Who knows? We'll have to see. Otherwise, what do you guys think about this? Let me know down in the comments. And be sure to subscribe to this channel for more Marvel Champions content. Thank you, guys.